Okay, guys, uh, we're going to start off with the first part of uh, uh, the Israeli counter terror active shooter protocol. Um, uh, I'm going to demonstrate what this is going to look like. Uh, we've got one uh, target simulated down at the end of the range. Again, I'm using Airsoft here. I'm rolling the Cherries Kaidon Lowrider IWB or IWB Holster. It's a super low cut. Um, and again, it gives you added retention. It's also very easy to draw the pistol and then come out and be able to fire. Okay, I'm also rolling a full-size uh, Glock 17 uh, um, Airsoft replica. And you can see it's it's really concealable. I, I roll it in the 11:30 position. Uh, it does a couple things. One, it makes the actual clip disappear. Two, it makes the edge of the uh, handle disappear also because it's pushed in more so you don't have to do any uh, fancy chopping. So we're gonna start with the first part of the protocol. I'm basically gonna demonstrate it right now. When there's an active threat and somebody's firing, I need to be firing, okay? I don't wanna be moving towards the threat. I don't wanna be moving away from the threat, all right? In a firefight, whoever's more aggressive and who's shooting straighter and hitting is gonna eventually end up dominating the opposing force. So what I wanna do is just get on this target as quickly as I can. Um, and it's really important to bring out a couple of things. One, how many rounds do I wanna be firing with this guy? Typically, I've noticed uh, a lot of different units and a lot of shooters, they're firing usually two bullets to the chest or the thoracic area. With an active shooter, uh, uh, that really is not what you wanna do. What you wanna do with an active shooter is you wanna keep firing as many rounds as it takes and learn a style of shooting. Uh, we use an instinctive point shooting method, which is designed to basically get you on target extremely quickly and then lock you into a very tense body position so that you can fire rapidly. And so the reason why that's effective for an active shooter is because he will continue to fire at innocent bystanders until he goes down to the ground. So at, for per protocol, again, this is part of a counter-terrorist doctrine, we're not using a typical, even reality-based tactical shooting. This is a combat system designed specifically for terrorists, in this case, a terrorist active shooter, okay? So we wanna be able to fire as many rounds as it takes at the target until the target goes down. Todd is gonna be in the back. You can't see him right now on camera. I'm gonna to begin to, when he's gonna call out the word terrorist or shooter, I'm gonna begin firing at the threat. When the threat goes down, watch what I do, okay? Um, and then we'll pick it up from there and we'll continue to wrap it up. So the camera's gonna move with me and stay with me as I work. I'm gonna stand here uh, facing Todd and then we're gonna go from a draw just to make it a little more realistic. I can't really see what's behind me and he's gonna call terrorist. Terrorist! Okay guys, so what you just saw me do was I'm gonna continue to fire at the terrorist as rapidly but as controlled as possible as many rounds as possible until the threat actually goes down. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate it one more time. I'm gonna come from the holster from the draw. Set up over here for me, please. Okay, um, and I'm gonna call this out on my own and just watch me move and work. Terrorist! Okay, so what am I doing? As soon as I spot the threat, I'm coming out with my weapon uh, out of my concealment holster. Obviously, if I'm out in a movie theater or I'm out uh, at a mall, uh, I'm gonna be concealed, I'm gonna be covered, whether you're off duty, law enforcement, uh, plain clothed, or a CCW carrier. Uh, you're gonna come out as quickly as you can, lock yourself into a body position. Let's walk through it one more time, okay? <coughs> And I'm gonna begin to engage. There's a couple different ways I draw the pistol and I'll just sort of demonstrate it, okay? Basically, I'm, I'm stepping out into my stance, I'm clearing the shirt as I bury my weapon into the well of the gun. I'm coming forward, firing as many shots in a stable stance. Guys, you can be isosceles, you can be slightly weaver, it doesn't matter. Just get your weapon locked up so your gun doesn't move and get your elbows as tight and your shoulders as tight as possible. And then fire as many rounds as it takes. And right now I'm just simulating with the air because we're in an indoor facility. Just want to show you with the action of the slide, firing as many rounds as it takes until he goes down. As Soon as the threat goes down after you see him firing up to five or six shots, he's down, the finger comes out of the trigger. I'm gonna turn and rotate the weapon 45 degrees. This is called a cant. This is so that I can check if I have any malfunctions, okay? 
I don't want to run forward if I have a stove pipe, a double feed, my slide could be locked back, means what? I'm out of ammo, I have to switch magazines. I don't want to be aggressing or running up on a terrorist threat if I don't have any ammunition or if I have a malfunction with my gun because then I'm forced to turn it into a blunt object, which I'll explain how to use as well as we progress here, okay? So I'm coming out of the holster. Let me reset it one more time so you guys can see. Okay, again, I'm using the uh, our Cherry's uh, Kaidon Lowrider holster. It's basically an extremely low riding IWB holster. It's designed to basically barely clear the top of your belt. Does a couple things. One, gives you added concealment because the weapon isn't gonna be printing up towards uh, uh, two inches higher up on your stomach. Two, it's extremely secure so it allows you to run and fight if you need to and be able to get into a wrestling match with someone if you had to or if someone comes and reaches and attempts to grab your gun. It's much more secure because it's actually making contact with your pant line. So that's the reason why we designed it. We're gonna be using our equipment throughout this course because we designed this equipment for these courses. So you guys might go, oh, well, he's just trying to sell his stuff. Well, yeah, we are trying to sell our stuff because we specifically designed it um, to be used and to help you by having better utility equipment on you, holsters, garments, etc., so that you have an advantage when you're responding to this type of active threat, okay? So the first thing I'm doing, when I spot the threat, my shirt's getting cleared, I'm coming out, I'm firing until the threat goes down, I'm turning and checking the weapon, making sure I don't have a malfunction. I now have to get to the threat as quickly as possible. If I'm walking and shooting, two things are not happening, okay? If I have a crowd of people, which and they're going to be running in every direction when these, gun sh when these gunshots start, uh, start going off. And remember, the active shooter is going to have initiated the fire, okay? Hopefully, a good security-minded uh, uh, off-duty police officer or lawful CCW carrier will have picked up that threat walking in. We see the movie theater shootings recently. They seem to be coming out of the exits down towards the screen once the actual film has already started. So those are already red flags. Those are, those are things I'd be looking for immediately when you go into the theater. Nobody should really be walking into the theater after lights go down. Obviously, if it's someone getting up and using the restroom, that's a different story, but people that are coming in later, uh, it, you know, unless you're the prime minister of a company and you're purposely trying to dupe out uh, uh, the, the moviegoers so that you can you know, adhere to your security protocols, uh, the prime minister of Israel uh, will always show up to a movie after the camera uh, already starts, to, or after the uh, uh, lights go down. So. Basically, we're firing. As soon as the threat goes down, you have to immediately get to the threat. And the reason why is because if it's an active shooter or a terrorist, their goal, even if they get hit, will be to take that weapon and then continue firing at the crowd of people, okay? It's not fast enough to walk and shoot. It's not fast enough. You have to sprint. And what I mean by sprint is, the weapon stays forward in the direction of the threat and you're going to pump your arms as you're running to get more speed. You'll notice I do a shuffle stop as I get up to the threat. That's because of the momentum that I'm creating because I'm forcing an aggressive attack. Again, this is based on the pressure cooker. In Hebrew we said, uh, I need to push the fight to him. If he's, when you have two uh, energies, whoever's more aggressive is gonna dominate. So my shots have to be faster and they have to be on target quicker. As soon as he goes down, I want to sprint up to him. Two things are going to happen. Either I'm going to fire a neutralizing shot in the center of his nose to hit his, uh, the back of his brainstem, which will keep his hands from moving. It's not personal. I'm not trying to kill this guy. I'm simply shooting him so that he goes down, which is subduing him. The next move is to neutralize his hands. The only scientific way I can guarantee neutralizing his hands based on the threat is to fire into the nose or in the uh, cortex region here so that I hit the back of the brain stem which will paralyze his hands and keep him from either being able to detonate an explosive or continuing to fire even if he's on his back on the ground, okay? And there is footage that we're going to tie in here and we're going to show you uh, footage of an actual suicide bomber that failed to detonate who was killed by an Israeli off-duty police officer using uh, uh, high visibility uh, uh, gear that all police officers are forced to carry in Israel and ended up actually firing into the head of the terrorist because after we tried to give him medical help, he still was trying to blow himself up, okay? So again, these are the types of, uh, of, of animals that you're dealing with when it comes to this sort of thing, okay? So I'm firing. 
soon as he goes down, I'm sprinting. As quick as I can, I'm gonna shuffle. Re-establish my point to the head. At this point, he should be on the ground. I'm either gonna fire one shot, if he's still trying to shoot, or if he's subdued and he's not moving, I'm gonna kick his firearm away, and then I'm gonna announce that I'm a CCW holder or an off-duty police officer and immediately wreath sheath or holster my weapon. When the phone call goes out, all they're gonna hear is guy with gun, rookie police officer pulls in, you're gonna get lit up. Get the gun away, stand by the threat, take a few steps back, and identify yourself to the crowd, okay? That's number one, let's reset it. Stand by, we're gonna do this one more time for you guys, stand by. <laughs> 